Hello everybody and welcome to this video where today we're going to do something totally fucking different, okay? Totally different. But for those of you who normally come here for writing tips and things of that nature, you're still going to fucking learn a lot because there is going to be something we're going to talk about and that is the nature of retaining an audience. So whether you are writing a, a book series, if you're writing a television series, if you're writing anything that's purpose is to retain your readership or viewership, this is actually going to be really important and you're actually going to learn something. So for those of you who don't know, one of the things that I absolutely love to follow is the business of professional wrestling. Okay. It's just, I grew up loving wrestling. I dabbled in pro wrestling myself. I wanted it two different times. I tried starting my own indie promotion, the whole thing, the way wrestling is now is not something that I enjoy to spend 10 fucking hours a week watching, you know, like I have shit to do. I, I can't invest that kind of time. But what I can do is keep up on all the promotions, keep up on the storylines, hear what's going on. More exciting to me as of late is keeping up with the actual business, what the ratings for shows are, what ticket sales are for events, and looking at patterns to see what's what. Now, um, over the years of doing all this stuff and keeping up with stuff, there has been this anomaly that no one seems to be able to understand, and I'm gonna fix it. And if you saw the title of the video, you already know. But no one's been able to figure this out. And I don't know if this is necessarily true, but there is a way to figure this out. And if any of you out there have days to kill doing research and making charts and fucking making PowerPoints and doing all this other fucking shit, you're probably going to fucking learn something and it's going to be like, ah, shit. Okay. So the thing I'm talking about is the, um, the big bang bump. Okay. Now what the big bang bump is, is that, um, there is a rest, there's a wrestling promotion called AEW all elite wrestling. Now what I'm about to say, it doesn't matter if you love AEW. It doesn't matter if you hate AEW. There's, there's no opinion in any of this. Okay. We're not, I'm not, I'm not here to talk shit on AEW. I'm not here to praise AEW. I'm just talking numbers and shit here. Okay. So what happens is, is on Wednesday night, AEW has a show called dynamite. And I believe it's on TBS, maybe TNT. It's on one of these channels. I don't know. I don't fucking watch it because I don't watch fucking wrestling. I just keep up with it, okay? But anyway, so before AEW comes on at 8 o'clock or whatever, there is at 7.30 um, and maybe even at 7. I have no idea. There is um, a rerun in syndication of a show called The Big Bang Theory, which was a huge fucking show and apparently still fucking is, okay? What happens is, is while AEW's ratings average comes out for a two-hour show, that first quarter, so the 8 to 8.15 period, that number is always really high. Maybe I'll put a graph up to fucking show this to you. So their first quarter is always really high. And usually what that is, is... Nielsen households, um, people who were watching the Big Bang Theory and then like weren't quick enough to turn the fucking TV off or whatever, and a bunch of people, wrestling fans, coming in to watch AEW. So a lot of times, that first quarter number is over a million viewers, okay? And then as you watch the rest of AEW, Dynamite, it just goes like this, and then... Um, it kind of flattens and then peters out a little bit. But that first initial bump, the Big Bang bump, gives AEW inflated numbers for their show, 
And every fucking show does this. Like, whatever the lead-in show is, and in this case, it's Big Bang Theory, the people who put those shows on are kind of crossing their fingers, hoping maybe people will forget to fucking change the channel. Oh, this will be great. We'll get a big bump, whatever. And I really feel like a lot of overruns are the same thing. Like, you have an overrun um, where your show lasts longer than it's supposed to to try to get the bump of people tuning in to see what show was coming on at that time or whatever. Who cares? The point of the matter is, is that sometimes the Big Bang bump is higher than others. And maybe somebody has fucking talked about this, but I've been watching videos and listening to podcasts about wrestling ratings for fucking years, and I've never heard anyone talk about this. So the thing here is, and what you need to learn as a writer who's making shit, I think that you can predict what the Big Bang bump is gonna be on each episode of Dynamite based on what season of Big Bang Theory is being shown on TBS that week or TNT or whatever fucking channel it is. When Big Bang Theory started, it didn't start off with a ton of viewers, okay? And usually with most sitcoms, the first season of that sitcom is pretty fucking weak and it's people trying to, and even the writers and the actors, like they're all trying to figure out, like they're trying to figure out their character. They're trying to figure out um, the relationships between, because like you could write whatever the fuck you want to write. But then when you see the actors and how they interact with one another and the chemistry they have. A lot of times things change because chemistry between two people is very visible on screen, okay? So that first season is always gonna be a little weird, but there, ha there is something to be said about completionists, and completionists like to start from the beginning, okay? So when the Big Bang season starts, because I'm assuming when TBS shows this fucking show, they show the fucking episodes in order, okay? So if people could find out, like, when Big Bang Theory starts, like, when, like, the first episode, oh, shit, this is the first episode, I could start it from right here. Because I'm not 100%, but I think Big Bang Theory is one of those shows that never really went streaming. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, tell me down below. But I remember vaguely that it was really hard to try to watch that show for some reason. Um, so maybe, and it's because of this TBS thing. Okay, so that first season is going to be like kind of hit or miss, okay? But there will be people who want to start from the beginning. Then the show will progressively grow, Okay, now the way to figure this out is to go back and look at the actual fucking Nielsen ratings for when this show was on originally and look and see where the spikes and everything were. Because it's going to be very similar to that when people are re-watching it. And one of the things is, is the will they or won't they thing. I can't remember the characters' names, um, little nerd guy from Roseanne and the cuckoo chick with the nice arms. Okay. I don't remember their names. There's this whole will they or won't they thing. Now, this is also really important for the um, demographic of women who stick around to watch AEW. When the will they or won't they thing is moving, and that goes through probably half of the show at least. Okay this big arc. As the will they or won't they is growing, usually that's the show growing, okay? You'll be able to see this in ratings numbers and shit. But as soon as you take the will they or won't they thing, like, is this guy going to get with this girl? Once you, as a creator, make the decision, yes, this is going to happen, okay? Yes, these people are going to be together, or no, they're not going to be together. Once you make that decision, you're going to lose a good portion of your audience because the whole reason they were there for that was just to see that thing. They were like living vicariously through this weird relationship. Is it going to hit? Is it going to do the thing? So with that said, like if you remember The Office, I know a lot of people and this is total anecdotally. Like, I don't have any fucking numbers to prove this, but I could probably guarantee that this is about how it is. When Jim and Pam finally got together, after that point, I bet the ratings started to dip. I bet you money. And if fucking, uh, what do you call it? Nielsen was doing demo ratings 
at that time, which they probably were. I don't know how the fuck demo ratings work. I bet you would see um, a drop off of women after they decided to get together. Okay. Just saying. When you look at the will they or won't they thing with the people on the Big Bang Theory, as that's going, you're going to see a bigger drop. And this is just me guessing. You're going to see a much bigger drop of women watching AEW. So that first quarter hour, there's going to be a ton of women watching um, the first quarter hour of AEW. And then all of a sudden they drop off. And it's like, wow, I don't get it. I don't understand. Why don't women like this? Is it the blood? Is it like, um, do they just hate Orange Cassidy? I don't understand why these women are dropping off. It has absolutely nothing to do with the wrestling product. It has everything to do with they were watching the Will They or Won't They. Now, as soon as the Will They or Won't They ends, you're going to notice that that initial bump between um, women viewers and the women who stick around for AEW past the first quarter, that window is going to get way more narrow, okay? Because there's just not as many women watching the thing. Because once you do, and I'm not trying to say that this is only a woman thing, but this is how advertisers and TV shows are created. This is why the will they or won't they thing exists. Because there's a huge demographic of people, at least half, who really like that. And that's the main reason why they watch a show. Now, what you're going to see with a lot of shows that last longer than that is once they give away the will they or won't they, they immediately have to find another couple that they could will they or won't they to try to hold on to the people who were going to leave once that happens. And usually it doesn't last. It doesn't work as well. Okay. So the other thing is, is jumping the shark and jumping the shark comes from happy days where... Fonzie jumped a shark, okay? It's a long story, whatever. Google it. Every show hits a point where they've done everything they could do. It's just not as good. So they do something to try to like make viewers excited to still watch the show. And usually when they do this, it's something fucking stupid and ridiculous. And what ends up happening more is people go away. Okay, now this is also in wrestling called hot shotting. Okay, you hot shot the show, you do something ridiculous, like totally crazy, to get eyes on your product in hopes that they stick around, but they don't. Once you do something so many times, it loses its effect, and it's just like, hmm, whatever. And you can see this from like, I mean, again, we could go back to happy days, we could talk about I Love Lucy. Like you, you could learn everything you need to know about, um, like serialized anything by just studying. I love Lucy for fuck's sake. Like it's like the gold standard of how something works. Um, but anyway, and for those of you who don't know, if you ever watch SpongeBob SquarePants, okay. SpongeBob SquarePants is basically every episode of I Love Lucy. I swear to God, I feel like the people who made SpongeBob or the guy who made SpongeBob just like watched I Love Lucy. And he's like, okay, now if she was a sponge and New York was under the sea. Uh, okay, I got it. I got it. And that's just me talking out my ass. I don't know if that's true, but I feel like it's the same formula. Anyway, moving right along. Once you hot shot a territory to death, it's, it's going to die. And even the greatest shows ever die, okay? So there's going to come a point in Big Bang Theory where they kind of jump the shark and hotshot the territory, and then everything starts to decline, okay? Now, look for that. What season was that? When did that happen? Look at the Nielsen numbers. Make a fucking graph, okay? When that happens, even people watching Big Bang Theory over again, and even people watching it for the first time, trying to watch it all the way through, if it's that bad, the same thing is going to happen. You will lose the same amount of viewers that you did when the show was new on TV, like first run. 
than you will in your syndication because the show just isn't going to be as good. And there's not going to be people rushing home at 730 to make sure they could see that thing because it's like, eh. and there will be a lot of people. And think about it too. Think about it for you. Shows that you watch in syndication. I don't have a TV, so I haven't watched TV in fucking forever. So I can't like give you a good example but i remember i used to do this with um i used to do it with the simpsons a lot there was a point when um i just didn't think the simpsons was that good anymore and so um i would watch it oh and married with children when married with children was in syndication like there was the good episodes and then when they got bad and they just kept playing the same thing i'm like eh, whatever i'm not gonna fucking watch this who cares so this thing is real so you should be able to look at what season the Big Bang Theory is on and look at the original viewership of that and see. And then you could probably even look at like sales of DVD seasons if you want to get that into the weeds with it. What seasons of the Big Bang Theory sell the most DVD box sets? If that's even a fucking thing anymore. You can figure all this out. So then you will know when that season a Big Bang Theory's on and going through for those next couple weeks, the the best seasons of Big Bang Theory are going to have the biggest bump on the numbers when AEW starts. When you get into the tail end of the seasons, it's not going to be as big. And so for all of these like people trying to figure this out, and I was just watching the WrestleNomics thing, and I was going to leave them a comment, but you can't leave them comments. Comments are turned off. Like you have to like pay to fucking be on fucking some fucking thing to be able to let them know something i don't know whatever i just didn't want to fucking like spend the time to fucking research this shit so basically what i'm trying to tell you guys <laughs> is that this isn't really this like crazy of a thing like i don't get it like sometimes aew you know it's good sometimes there's a, a big woman demographic sometimes there's not you know it's just like this is big bang that sometimes the big bang number is big and sometimes it's not you know i can't really under, it's not fucking rocket science at all it's just like i don't think any of the people who are trying to figure these things out are looking at how serialized storytelling works it's not hard okay so and again i haven't researched any of this this is just what i assume is happening so for those of you who are into this shit and research this shit and do this shit, if you know Brandon Thurston, send him this fucking video and tell him I said hello. I was going to write him an email, but I don't have his fucking email address. I'm sure it's something at WrestleNomics. Who gives a shit? Whatever. But the takeaway here from a writing standpoint is whenever you make the decision on the will they or won't they, everything you do after that is going to be falling action. Okay? It just fucking is. That's why fucking romance novels end with the two people fucking and walking off into the sunset. You know? That's the end and so if you're doing something that is continuing continuing on you need to make sure that the secondary character definitely has a love interest before you will they or won't they that because there needs to be something on for that demographic to latch on to and start living vicariously through hopefully this makes sense um but yeah so anyway so that's writing serialized fiction and how to understand the big bang bump type hard everybody keep buying my books and i will talk to you all later just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible anarchy crew and my followers on patreon i appreciate the hell out of you guys thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible you guys are awesome and if you'd like to join the crew of the anarchy crew just hit the join button beneath this video and if you'd like to become a member of my patreon you can run over to the link down below to do that as well thank you